Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. Thanks for joining us to celebrate another outstanding year at the Public Theater. This year, it's my pleasure to honor two people who've made a tremendous impact on not only our theater, but also our city, Anne and Bernard Spitzer. As lifelong supporters of the intellectual, educational, and cultural values of the city, Bernard, who sadly passed away last year, and his wife, Anne, have been longtime supporters of the public. Among our very first audience members, they embraced Joe Papp's vision very early on, that great theater, particularly great theater by our greatest playwright Shakespeare, should be available to the widest audience possible. There has not been a summer that I haven't seen the Spitzers in the audience here at the Delacorte. Their presence is felt and appreciated both here and at our downtown home at Astor Place. They are indeed part of the very fabric of our great city and of our organization, and we are deeply, deeply grateful to call them family. Since, yes. Since 1962, more than five million people have enjoyed over 150 free productions in this very theater we are in tonight. To ensure that thousands of people could continue to enjoy one of our greatest cultural treasures for free in this incomparable space, Anne and Bernard made an incredibly generous and meaningful donation of $4 million to the public theater. Every New Yorker or tourist, student or senior who has seen a performance of Shakespeare in the Park over the past few seasons owes tremendous gratitude to the Spitzer family. It's because of their visionary support that we are able to continue the tradition of sharing great theater with everyone, regardless of background or ability to pay, absolutely free. And on behalf of myself, Oscar, the Board of Trustees, and indeed the entire city of New York, it's my pleasure to thank you by presenting you with this original photo. This was taken by Annie Leibovitz during the 50th anniversary of Shakespeare in the Park and is one of a very limited edition. My husband told me to uh, be sure that I didn't rush my speech and also said, remember, you're holding up the show while you're delivering. So, um, we're all big fans of Shakespeare here, so none of us need to be told that marriage, like all forms of union, is a dialectical affair strengthened by opposition as much by accord, as much a matter of complementarity as it is of singularity of mind, action, appetite, soul, and spirit. I think when we gather together to honor Laurie and Oscar Eustace in this particular setting inside this wooden O, technically it's more of a wooden U, the Delacorte, but you know what I mean, within the walls of one of the world's most beautiful, fabled public Shakespeare stages in the context of celebrating and supporting one of the world's most fabled, important theaters, the glorious public theater, we should begin by considering the dialectics of marriage, the way in which dramatic clashes and finely sifted insight nuance and bombast, grand theory and strenuous pragmatics, the beautiful and the beastly, the earthly and the sublime combine, couple, combat, catch hands, and dance a wheeling two-step into which we, the public, feel welcomed, safe as we need to be, safe as we want to be, recognized, respected, and treasured. Let's start, in other words, by thanking Laurie and Oscar for making a marriage which has made it possible for us public people to find in the Delacorte on Lafayette Street not a nest or a cocoon, but a life-affirming, energy-enhancing, heart-swelling and mind-boggling theatrical field of force that we can call home, a fun home, if you will. <laughs> and if you've seen Fun Home, you know that the brilliant pleasures of liberation inhabit fun homes as well as encounters with liberation's tragic opposite and liberation's costs. If you haven't seen Fun Home, what the hell is the matter with you? Um, <laughs> go see it. It's, well, yeah. Uh, I won't specify which attributes among those I've enumerated belong to Lori and which to Oscar and which they share and which they trade off at various points. It'd be very easy for me to talk about what I admire in my best friend Oscar, his brains, his bravery, his big beautiful heart, his skills as a builder, his manly good looks, his beard, his unflagging devotion to the public good, his deep devotion to radical democratic ideals, his dramaturgical prowess without which I'd be, I don't know what, I shudder to think, something awful, a Republican presidential candidate maybe. <laughs> 
Nothing's easier than to tell you what I admire in my beloved Lori, her brains, her bravery, her fierce, loyal, enveloping, nurturing love, her deep seriousness and thoughtfulness, her insight, her compassion, her capacity to astonish, her honesty, the beauty she creates around her and discerns in likely and unlikely places, her genius for sharing privacy and quiet, her deep decency, her democratic yet aristocratic, radiant, elegant, homespun, complex invention of her deliciously original self. But it's not my job tonight to attempt to parse out or pick asunder what has been joined together so successfully in this marriage, so much to all our advantages. We're celebrating a pairing and what it's produced. Their marriage has produced, my, among other things, my dear, adorable pal, Kyle Brown, who's synthesized and performs variations on, yeah, you know, on her, uh, who's synthesized and performed variations on her mother's and stepfather's keen knowingness, supple and electric engagement, curiosity, salutary restlessness, and skeptical, oppositional, struggling souls, adding to them her own unique smarts, humor, sweetness, compassion, and her really extraordinary gifts. Their marriage produced Kyle's brother, my dear godson, Jack, who brought, and this is really true, it sounds like something you have to say, but it's really true about Jack, who brought happiness, delight, and joy to everyone who knew him. Lori and Oscar shared Jack with the world for 16 years, and in the course of this inexpressibly, fathomlessly ter terrible time, they've refused the natural instinct to retreat. They've denied themselves the solace of complete isolation. Together with Kyle, they've allowed their immediate and extended circle of family and friends, the people who love them and who admire them, all of us, to find a place within their heartbreak and grief. They've made of their shared imponderable loss a kind of home within which we can mourn their son and brother, mourn for them and try to mourn with them, at least try to take upon us the mystery of things as if we were God's spies, by which I suppose Shakespeare meant a kind of philosophical calm earned by not turning away. Laurie and Kyle and Oscar have had to blaze a path into a wilderness into which no one ever wants to go, through their astonishing courage and vast generosity, they've managed to illuminate the path for the rest of us. Hard as it is to come to it, that's the destiny of all humankind. So we're grateful to you. Uh, we'd give anything to have spared you what you've gone through. Prospero says to Ferdinand and Miranda that their vexations were trials of their love. When we're tried, love is tested, sometimes severely. Oscar, Laurie, Kyle, you're showing us how love endures. And every time we go to the public or come to see what's going on at this most magnificent, on this most magnificent stage, we must remember that we're witnessing what love produces. What I love about honoring this couple, this marriage tonight in the context of making sure the theatrical miracles of very recent vintage we've seen at the public theater keep on gestating and being born. What I love about the Oscar, Laurie, and Kyle-ness of this award, not to mention the Anne and Bernard Spitzer-ness of this award, is that we're acknowledging the actuality, the reality of familial, spousal, sororal, collective, communal endeavor and enterprise. So mazel tov and many, many thanks to the Public Theater Board and to the heroic Menschlach, brilliant staff of the public for figuring that out. And now I'd like to call Patrick, Mandy, and Ari back to the stage. <laughs>